What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me, but I just got home off of an early morning flight, right? First thing through the door, I want to see my family. I love my family. You know, I'm a family man. I'm an advocate for families, right? Second thing, I got to get that hot shower because I got to throw the threads on. The threads make me feel like a million bucks. But the third thing through my mind and all throughout the trip is that I got to have that Tej pack. Tej makes my life uncomplicated. It's uncomplicated skincare for men. The first way that I started specifically was their level one system. It's a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin. Two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Here's the thing. My favorite part about Teach Henley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use and in what order. They really make in a process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin for men uncomplicated in addition to amazing skin members of Tej Hanley get tons of benefits including at least 20 percent off the retail price the ability to customize your box exclusive monthly deals you can pause and cancel at any time and you get free shipping and because Tej Hanley is sponsoring today's video they're offering my viewers an amazing deal right just click the first link in the description and you get 30 percent off your first box plus a free gift it's an amazing deal. You got to get started today. You're not out here trying to look like a dusty dusty. And if you travel as much as I do, which I'm sure most people don't, but you know me, I'm pushing my bag chasers in order to be in the top 5%, top 10%, top 1%. We got to make our lives uncomplicated and teach Henley is no better product. You got to look good. You got to smell good. And, and you can't be looking like a dusty dusty. Make sure you get started today. Click the link in the description. Get that Tej pack. Fill the Tej, my friends. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. What's going on, man? It is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024, year of our Lord. I almost feel like we at the end of the week. <laughs> the amount of conversations that we are having on After Hours, the Anton Daniels channel, here on the Millionaire Morning Show. It's getting a little uncomfortable. <laughs> What's happening? Where y'all checking in from? Let me know where y'all checking in from, man. We're going to see what the word is. Thunderbird today. Let me know where y'all checking in from. Happy Wednesday on spring vac break vacation with your son. Man, I don't even know what a vacation feel like. What does a vacation feel like? What does vacations feel like? Man, it's hump day. DMV, Charlotte, North Carolina. Good morning, Marcella. Uh, LFG, Miami, Atlanta, Georgia, Sacramento, San Antonio, San Jose, Durban, South Africa, Vero Beach, Dallas, South Carolina, Biloxi. Can't wait to get Biloxi. Illinois, North Dakota, Greenville, Tulsa. Miami Day, what up though? Nashville, Detroit, Texas, Baltimore County, Charleston, South Carolina, Houston, Texas, Trenton, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, New Mexico, what up Felicia Gibbs? Bellwood, Illinois, Battle Creek, Michigan, Roxy, what up? St. Louis, Coral Springs, uh, Georgetown, Bay Area, DMV, Milwaukee, Arkansas, Pensacola, DMV, Texarkana, DC, Fort Cambro, Detroit, heavy up in this joint. Chicago, what up though? Munford, Rosedale Park, Charleston, uh, Boston, Raleigh, Alabama, says Roll Tide, Loso Way, Indianapolis. I love them, Indianapolis. I got an awesome zoo over there. Horrible strip clubs, but an awesome zoo. Southfield, Marietta, <laughs> Tampa, Arlington, Denver, Chicago. Oh, your other home roll tide. Okay, Cincinnati. What up, Cincy? 
Uh, Dallas, Texas, Pittsburgh. What up, though? Fayetteville, Ohio, Garner, North Carolina. What up, friends and family? What up? Hey, can y'all give yourselves a round of applause over there in Virginia Beach, Chicago, Tampa, Chicago, all across the world that's tuned into the Millionaire Morning Show? <laughs> What's up, friends and family? How y'all feeling today? Everything is good? Everything is good? You know, I... um. I, I, I get an opportunity to be able to travel a lot and I see a lot of people's productions and what they do. And I'm gonna read the super chats and the cash app shortly. Uh, and I get an opportunity to see what everybody is doing and stuff like that. Do you know that everybody, um, everybody has that, that, you know, puts on a halfway decent show, 98, 99% of them, have large scale productions. Like when you see these podcasts and you see these shows and stuff, they have whole audio teams and engineers and videographers and editors and production assistants and producers and all of this stuff, man. Listen, we solo dolo over here on the Millionaire Morning Show. And still ain't nobody messing with us. We solo dolo. That's it. Give me a laptop, a microphone, some software, and we're going to run it up. We're going to take care of, care of business. We solo dolo over here on Anton Daniels, the Millionaire Morning Show, After Hours. That's it. That's it, man. I'll be looking around. There'll be people running everywhere and stuff like that. I'll be like. There'd be so much happening around you. I said, whoa, what is going on out here? I'm solo dolo, bro. That's it. That's it. I'm lean. I've read a book, um, The Toyota Way. Lean Six Sigma. Operating more efficiently. Putting out better content. Less barriers. Corporate America taught me that all of these middle managers are not necessarily necessary for me in order to be great. I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing. All money in. <laughs> like Nip said, I thought you had someone working with you, always talking to somebody. Uh, Rita stopped by every once in a while, and I'll be talking to her in the background. That's it. That's it. Everybody else is contractors, depending on what it is that they do for my other businesses. That's it. We don't need a whole lot of people. We don't need none of that. And we still do a better and put on a better show than everybody else. That's a fact. That's a fact. So shout out to you guys. I appreciate you. Uh, make sure you guys tap into the Patreon. The link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, also, Tej Hanley. Make sure y'all get y'all team Tej Hanley. Make sure y'all get y'all. We got to listen. I think that this is going to be an interesting show today. I think that this is going to be an interesting show today. Last night on After Hours, it was absolutely an interesting debate and an interesting show last night. If y'all didn't catch that, go ahead and restream it. It's crazy. It was crazy. Um, but we definitely going to get to the money. We definitely going to get to the news. We're going to get to Diddy. We're going to get to a lot of different people and a lot of different stuff. All right? So buckle up. Get your Tej Hanley. Link is in the description for y'all to get that Tej pack. If you want skin like mine, and make sure you get that teach pack. Also, on top of that, if you're not a part of the Patreon, you're not a part of the Bag Chasers, uh, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. And what else? What else? Let me read some of these cash apps. Mike That Dude. What up to my dog, Mike That Dude? Shout out to Mike That Dude. Let me get you the round. <laughs> Mike That Dude is, is one of the most consistent people that I've ever met in my entire life. Thank you, Mike That Dude, for holding me down. Mike Cow, Michael, sh shout out to you for the five ball on Cash App. I appreciate you, big dog. And then I got my first super chat of the day. Yay. Brandon McMillian says, uh, my company is looking good. Shout out to Brand. Enforcer 2K9. Oh, my God. Man, 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 man. Tell me about it. It was so much feminine energy on the show last night. Uh, before we get started with the show, let me say this just really quickly, and then we're going to get right into quick hits, y'all. So we got a full show for y'all today. Is it me? Is it me? 
Or have men become women and women become men now? Is it me? <laughs> yo, yo. I see grown men. Somebody in the chat says was watching Gene Dio testimony on Diddy. Do you know that the only thing that we know Gene Dio for is sitting on the internet show by show by show, sitting here telling as many stories as he can possibly tell based off of what it is that he used to work for? That there are men that are sitting here trying to convict people based off of public opinion and not facts. I have never seen so many feminine men in my entire life. And it pains me. It pains me to actually even be having this conversation because I'm an advocate for men. All of these guys that called into my platform last night was telling me how somebody is supposed to go to jail based off of how they feel. Feelings? feelings we advocate for and the thing that we've been pushing for since the beginning of time since I can remember since I opened up my eyes and I stepped off the porch was that we don't convict people based off of accusations and public opinion alone where did that get lost in the sauce because you don't like somebody so because you don't like somebody you're telling me that you would wish jail on them without evidence. Now, when evidence come out, that's a completely different conversation. But are you telling me that we start to have conversations about how we feel about somebody that you didn't even do business with? L listen, listen. I can't stand Diddy. I absolutely, listen. Nobody was harder on Diddy. You want to go back. You want to look at the history on the Millionaire Morning Show. You want to look at the Anton Daniels channel. Cool. Go look at it. Look at my review of what he was talking about before all of these accusations ever came up about how he was doing business and what he was advocating for when he was having that lawsuit against Diageo Brands. And it's funny because when we go back and we look at that, I should pull that up. I should review that. When we come back and we pull that up, do you know that the entire chat was against me saying that I was wrong and that we need to stick together? Oh, man. You know what? I just remembered something. I remember doing a review video when he was on InvestFest for Earn Your Leisure. And he did his little pitch and he was giving his little million dollar thing over to them and he was saying, we need to stick together for the people. And I was saying, nah, man, listen, you don't deserve nothing. In the same way that you did business with other people that was working for you when your record label is the same way that they did business with you. And if they didn't sign a contract or you didn't sign a contract that said that you own it because you was fronting, acting like you was an owner with Ciroc. They never gave you ownership. You was just a high-paid marketing person. And so they paid you for your services. And so I held him accountable in the same way that I held other people accountable that signed a contract with Diddy. And every single person in the chat was like, no, man, you, need, you was wrong. You need to stick together. We need to be a part of the black community. We can't just do all of this and so on and so forth. And people was pissed. I remember looking at the comments. I remember looking at the comments and I said, listen, he capping and I can't believe y'all falling for the okie doke. And y'all was like, no, man, you ain't a part of the community. You ain't holding it down. You can't believe you can't believe these white companies, Diageo and all of this and these companies ain't even for us. And we buying their products. And, and y'all came at me because I was not on the same on the same wave. I said, no. Nah. I said, no, nah, F Diddy. F what he talking about just because he go on the platform. Then he's sitting here and he's dropping an album of a love album. That don't mean that I'm rocking with him. That don't mean that I'm rocking. And the whole chat, not everybody, but it's a lot of people that was in the chat and said, man, you ain't on code. Get on code. Fast forward, 2024, March. Hey, guys, we got to wait till the evidence is out. I don't like Diddy either as a person. I think that he's a monster when it comes to all of this freak offs and stuff like that. But hey, wait, 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 wait. The one thing that we don't do is we don't wish jail on people based off of theories and accusations. We got to actually wait for the contracts and the evidence and to see the evidence before we just convict somebody in the court of public opinion. Oh, Anton, you trying to get a contract with Diddy? What? 
What? What are you talking about? I've been one of the people that's been the most objective and I give my authentic thoughts based off of what I see people say as far as they coming out of their mouths specifically. So Diddy was the one that was talking about it. And I want to look at the evidence. When did that switch? Okay, so now you're not on code no more, right? Because I don't believe in being on code at all. I believe that you just go based off of whatever it is that you see. And that's how you determine whether or not you rocking with the person or not. But you're not on code no more. What happened to all of the people that was on code with him? Y'all not on code no more? Oh, wait a minute. You, you abandoned your blackness all of a sudden. Because you don't like, so wait a minute, you telling me all of those complaints and accusations and contracts wasn't there when he was on InvestFest talking about his, his legal battle with a Diageo? All of a sudden, everybody forgot that they was on code. Because all of those same people, and Gene Deal, and Mark Curry, and all of those people were still out there. They was all out there at the same time, way before that. So either people are just contrarian or y'all genuinely snakes. And the only thing that you like to see is people fall. And, and, and again, I'm open to the possibility that I'm wrong, but it, that's weird to me. That is weird to me that regardless of the side of the fence that you want, that people are not free thinkers. It bothers me that people are not free thinkers. You don't have a free thought in your body. Everything that you think is based off of what somebody else is saying. So your mama can, t this is why you vote the way that you do, because you don't even do your own research. The only thing you care about is what somebody else's opinion is. I seen somebody come up on the platform last night. So man, so anti, you telling me uh, the, the, the character or, or, you know, his profile, I mean, God, his, his children was arrested. I said his children wasn't arrested. What you talking about? Yes, they were. You telling me what I seen on the news and his children was handcuffed and they was being dragged. I said they detained him, but they didn't arrest him because they pulled him out of the house in order to have a spectacle and put him in front of the cameras so that they can make you think the way that you think, but they didn't actually arrest anybody. They just removed them out of the house so they can continue their search. Oh, 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 but you're still wrong. Then why did they, why did they stop him at the airport? Well, I mean, according to the news reports and his lawyer, they saying that he's not restricted on travel and everybody is still able to travel wherever it is that they want to travel. Why do you say he's running? And then I pulled up the evidence and I pulled up the news report from all NBC Los Angeles. Oh, I still want him to go to jail. Why? Because, I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. So evidence don't matter now? You know, I wish y'all had this same level of enthusiasm when it came to our politicians. I wish y'all had this same level of enthusiasm when it came to voting and your leaders and your city council members. I wish y'all had this same level of enthusiasm for Biden and Kamala Harris. I wish y'all had this same level of enthusiasm when it came to making sure that you, this same energy, this same energy when it comes to policy, when it comes to legislation, when it comes to taxes, when it comes to our laws, when it comes to making smarter decisions, when it comes to the, the, curriculum that, that, the curriculums that you pick in. I wish y'all had the same level of, of energy and smoke. For the, listen, we sit here and I have a conversation every single day about this migrant crisis. We discuss it, we mine it out, we look at the evidence, we see where it is. That the, we see men every single day coming up to the border. We know that women are literally flying across this country. We also look at alleged, alleged, let me use the right words, the alleged stories of women being trafficked by who? Can I really say it on this platform? Of women being trafficked when it comes to this migrant crisis, 
and nobody is saying nothing. Quiet on the set. But let Drake drop a new freestyle and K-Dot drop a new... Oh! oh that's how you got to react to this. That's why I got to put the medicine in the candy. That's why I got to put the medicine in the candy. I got to teach you through the entertainment because the only thing that you're enthusiastic about is making sure that you on code and off code depending on how you feel about a person. This is... This, it, All of the people want to see him fall, but all of them was rocking with him. And guess what? You know what the funniest part about this conversation is that they will never, ever admit that they was on his team and it was on his side because that love album, it was heavily streamed. <laughs> he just dropped the album and y'all was dancing to it. And Carisha, please. And y'all were saying, hey, let's make sure that we support Revolt TV because this is our platform for us, by us. You bought every album. You danced to the music. You supported Ciroc and you drunk up. What, all of these allegations wasn't available when y'all was drinking Ciroc and Diageo brands? All of y'all showed up to InvestFest to see him speak. It was sold out. Everybody been rocking all of this time because, listen, let me tell you something. When you really want to understand whether or not people support or not, they support it with their actions. They support it with their money. See, we can talk all of this nonsense on the Internet that we want to, but in reality, in reality, everybody was dancing. Everybody wanted to be invited to the party. Nah, it ain't no more parties. Smoke cleared. Everybody gone. Everybody gone. Nobody. Everybody was trying to get a record deal. Nah, ain't nobody trying to get a record deal no more. When he was brother love, y'all was loving on him. Y'all so fake. So fake. Faker than a $3 bill. Faker than a $3 bill. Fair weather. Switch on them. Fair weather. Switch up. Amazing. Amazing. I'm going to say what I want to say, bro. I don't care who like me. I don't care who don't like me. I don't care who agree with me. I don't care who don't agree with me. Fake. Fake. With friends like these, who need enemies? Oh, my God. Kendrick dropped a new verse. Mid-verse. Mid as ever. I'm going to be honest with you. I re-listened to that uh, the Future and, and Metro Boomin album yesterday. It really wasn't that great. It really wasn't that great. Let me read some of these super chats. Let me read some of the super Listen, I'm <laughs> we, we gonna get there today. We gonna get there today. I don't gotta do no recording later on. I just got some coaching calls. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna get my thoughts off. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna get my thoughts off. I know it's popular to be on that side of the fence, but I don't stand on the fence. I, I'm, I'm, I'm one way, 100% of the time. I'm 100% of the time, I'm one way. I don't care nothing about what the general public think. Whenever I see a whole bunch of people start to agree with it, I start asking myself questions and I start to dissect it to see if it's really what it is. That ain't what I think it is. It ain't what I think it is. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Joe Gun 84 says, Anton. What's up with the Bay Area meetup? Is nah, we not gonna do the Bay. We we gonna do somewhere a little. Y'all gonna have to travel away from Oakland and the Bay Area in order to continue to rock out. In order to continue, we gonna have a meetup. It's just not gonna be in the Bay. Shout out to my dog Joe Gun. 
Uh, Black Silver Chair is in the building. Oh, we gonna have that type of show today. Black Silver Chair in the building says, "Don't care. Diddy belongs to prison. F him." Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Uh, know Your Sound says, the producer Rod Jones is going after Diddy because he felt Diddy owed him money. It's a big payday. <laughs> Mr. Tamarez says, uh, if I ever get caught up, I hope you're my representative, AD. Yeah, I hold my people down. I don't switch up on them. That's the thing they criticize me for the most. I don't switch up on people. If I'm with you, I'm with you. If I don't care anything about you, I'm going to be objective about what, the, what it is that's happening with you. This is why I rock with me, myself, and I. Yeah. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. Uh, Messi says, listen, listening critically is a skill. You never defended Diddy. You defended due process. <laughs> To convict someone instead of conviction through public opinion and group think. I'm happy emotion isn't a legislative process. That's why y'all, that's why these women don't be trusting y'all. That's why they don't like being in a relationship with them. Because when when they get done and, and all of the emotions is high and they're trying to find a solution, all you want to do is bump coochies. Hmm. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm not gonna go off today. I'm, I'm gonna say that for Wednesday. It's Wednesday night. I'm so thankful that it's Wednesday night, Messi. I can get my thoughts off. I can get my thoughts off tonight. I'm going to reserve what I really think, and then we're going to have a, a real conversation tonight. Um, take that, take that, take that, take that, take that, says Dejan Chin. Yeah, they want to bump coochies with y'all. They're not trying to get to the, not trying to get to the thick of it. They're not free thinkers. Uh, Black Silver's here says, we love you, Anton. We hate Diddy, though. I don't have nothing to do with due process. I don't like people either, but I'm not going to wish jail on them. Um, Seminole 2014 says, your words remind me of Huey in an R. Kelly Boondocks episode looking back on a Boondocks. It's called Black Folk on a Whole Bunch of Shh. A Magnificent says, how dare you? Metro is the GOAT. Just playing, um. <laughs> Shout out to you. Shout out to you. B P. Shank. P. Shank. Shout out to P. Shank with the two ball says, thank you, Anton Daniels. The Millionaire Morning Show. Good morning. Good morning to you, P. Shank. Yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. It's a lot of femininity. It's a lot of femininity out here in these streets. Gray Way is in the building. We're going to read this super chat. I'm going to continue to read super chats throughout the show. Gray Way says, Palm Sunday, they celebrated Jesus. That Friday, they crucified him. Y'all know who Barabbas is? Y'all know who the Barabbas is? Man, listen, bro. Thank you, Great Way. When I retire from it all, I'm retiring completely. When I retire from it all, I'm walking away and I'm disappearing completely. I'm going to be a ghost. I ain't going to be sitting here dancing in the videos. When I get my billions, I'm out. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm gone. Straight up. Samuel Singh says, my brother Anton, meet up with the bag chasers in Los Angeles, fall 2024. I'll provide my band. We'll talk about it. Send me an email. We can talk about it. Thank you, my friend, for holding me down. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the show. Let's get into the show. Uh, again, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Also, Tej Hanley. Make sure you get your Tej Hanley. The link is in the description. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, we're going to get there. I'm going to read that shortly. We're going to get there. We're going to discuss Diddy. We got that coming up. Quick hits. Segment of the show that we want to dedicate to show you exactly what's going on uh, across the United States of America and sometimes internationally. We're going to go international today. All right? Um, first things first, so the cop that was deleted over this past weekend, more details are coming out about the persons that allegedly committed this crime and deleted him. Take a look. 
Tim, two men have blood on their hands tonight, and the more we learn about their background and their alleged criminal intent, the more infuriating this gets. Residents here especially alarmed at how much violence spilled out on this busy road. Tonight, more disturbing details of the men now in custody. The cell phone video shows the arrest of the alleged killer. Investigators now believe two ex-convicts were casing a T-Mobile store on Mott Avenue in Far Rockaway. Monday night, two officers with the community response team asked them to move their Kia from the bus stop where they were apparently parked illegally. That's when the encounter turns deadly. Officials say they refused to roll down their windows. Officer Jonathan Diller ordered the passenger to show his hands. Instead, the passenger allegedly pulled a weapon on the officer and killed him. The bullet striking just below Diller's vest. They have no regard, no respect for the law, for citizens, for people. Records show the passenger, 34-year-old Guy Rivera, has 21 prior arrests, including nine felonies. He was released from prison about two and a half years ago. Police say his illegal gun and an alarming amount of ammunition were recovered at the scene. The driver of the car has been identified as 41-year-old Lindy Jones. Officials point out he's been arrested 14 times, incarcerated for a decade, then released, and just last year was arrested again on another gun charge. Yet Jones was currently out on bail. The heavy rap sheets for both men, the loss of a brave young officer, have broken the city's heart. Expressions of grief now grace multiple precincts. All night long, I couldn't sleep. It's directly on them. It's on the state legislature and the assembly. They need to fix these problems. The community is in an uproar, and, and we just pray for him and his family. Rivera, who allegedly fired at the officer, was shot in the back by Diller's partner. He is expected to survive. The driver was not hit by any of the bullets. The city feeling the loss tonight. Rap sheets, long. Hey, I'm sure it was some people out there that was saying, Free Ray Ray. Free Ray Ray. We all know who the killers are. We all know where the guns is. Casing a T-Mobile store. Casing a T-Mobile store. They asked them, hey, move your car, family. <clears throat> Wouldn't even roll their windows down. All right, man, listen, bro. Uh, y'all Put your hands up, bro. Shot, gone, end the conversation. And they gonna survive. The killers and the crimes, the people that's come into crimes, they always live. They get three hots in a cot, they get a TV, they get comfortable. If they have good behavior, they'll be able to go into a lower security prison. They get snacks. Make sure that you put some stuff on their books. They a real one. Now they stamped. They stamped in the hood. They may be able to get off of good behavior. Widowed. Children. No father. Police officer for three years. End of discussion. End of discussion. Ah. <sighs> Stop and frisk, uh, it violates our constitutional rights. Well, police officer gone. Police officer gone. And they were casing a T-Mobile store. Casing a T-Mobile store. Jesus. Unreal. Um, in addition to that, also in quick hits, uh, Illinois parole board members are resigning over what again? After the CBS2 investigators pressed the state for days, they finally admit mistakes involving the release of an inmate from Stateville Prison. Hours later, that inmate is accused of going on a deadly attack. Meanwhile, two key state employees responsible for his release resigned today. Our Megan Hickey picks up the story from there. Jaden Perkins's loved ones gathered for a celebration of life Monday, less than two weeks after the 11-year-old's friends and loved ones gathered near the Edgewater home. 
where he was stabbed to death on March 13th. Police say Crisetti Brand had the knife. The offender was released from prison yesterday. That's right, he was paroled and released from the Illinois Department of Corrections custody the day before the murder. And that release happened despite Jaden's pregnant mother, Lataria Smith, who was also brutally stabbed, pleading in court last month to try to get a protective order against Brand. A Cook County judge said a March 13th follow-up hearing about the order of protection that both parties were supposed to attend and directed Brand be notified in prison. IDOC and the Prisoner Review Board that gave the green light on Brand's release both told us they didn't know about this protection order hearing. But emails and other records obtained by the CBS2 investigators since this attack appear to contradict that. A February 22nd email states an employee with the Office of the Clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County emailed the notice to an IDOC employee who she also spoke with on the phone. Today, a spokesperson for the clerk's office confirmed to us their office provided notification. Attempts to reach that specific Stateville Correctional Center employee were unsuccessful. Shortly after we submitted this new evidence to IDOC and the Prisoner Review Board for comment, Governor J.B. Pritzker announced the resignation of Prisoner Review Board member Leanne Miller, who wrote the report recommending Brand's release from prison. It is clear the evidence in this case was not given the careful consideration that victims of domestic violence deserve, Pritzker's announcement said in part. And late today, Governor Pritzker also announced the resignation of Prisoner Review Chair Donald Shelton. IDOC responded late today, acknowledging that their previous statement was wrong and they did, in fact, receive a notification about the March 13th court date. We have asked if a communication failure like this could impact other people trying to get protective orders. The clerk's office said yes. For more we are living in a degenerate era slash nation nation right now and i'm gonna be honest with you i don't believe that any of these people including governor pritzker over in illinois has the general public's best interest at heart i believe that uh, they want to make sure that it doesn't fold back up to them and we just going to ignore all of the recommendations and the safety act and all of this stuff and a no bail And the people, it's the people that suffer. Families, friends, heartbreak, finances. It's the people that wind up suffering for the things that your legislators, that you guys vote in the office, decide to do. And the laws that they create and the recommendations and the, the norms that they embrace that then lead to these type of people being back on the street. Last but not least, uh, Haiti. I want to keep you guys updated on Haiti. Uh, it's more unrest, and uh, our local leader, Barbecue, over there is having a field day. Another day in Port-au-Prince, a lull in the fighting, and the cars are back on the streets. Another day, and another body on the side of the road. It's becoming normal here. This man was shot. His family covered him and left. Burials Jesus are Christ. expensive. Another street, two more bodies, a man and a woman shot as they rode a motorcycle. Nobody knows why any of these murders are happening. We see the dead every day. This city is burning and there seems to be no end, no solution, perhaps even no hope. Neighborhood after neighborhood is barricaded off. Some are gang territories, some are communities trying to protect themselves. Absolutely nowhere feels safe. Through the barricades, we were given permission to enter a place called Salino. This community of about 10,000 people has been attacked by two separate gangs for a year. They want to take it over. At least 80% of Port-au-Prince has fallen to the gangs, but not here. That's because Salino is protected by armed vigilantes and off-duty policemen who live here and fight together. Every day, this is a struggle to survive. They are surrounded. Have y'all ever stopped for one second and asked yourself, for a place that is as poor as Haiti and Port-au-Prince, right, and how things are playing out over there, 
and that they can't even afford to take the bodies off the street that just wind up dying just right there in the daytime, right? For something like this to happen, have y'all ever even thought about something like, man, they can't even afford to breathe over there and they ain't even got clean water, but they got guns. How are so many weapons just flooding into the street? Bullets are expensive. Have y'all ever thought about that? Like, no water, can't bury their loved ones, they just throw a sheet over them. But everybody got a pistol, multiple pistols, and bullets, and ammunition. Where are they getting it from? Is it a gun store somewhere that, <laughs> is it a gun store somewhere that I'm not aware of? Where are they getting all of these weapons from? Am I asking too many questions? Should I go ahead and end uh, quick hits right now and keep going over to something else? I, listen, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm always trying to understand because the math just don't math to me. The math ain't mathing. The math ain't mathing. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits. I feel like I'm having the wrong conversations today. I feel like I'm having the wrong conversations today. I don't know what's wrong. Let me read these super chats and then we're going to get into the real show. Uh, Lucid Experience says that same thought process people have towards Diddy is the same reason T. Lane's got locked up. Court of public opinion, folks be grateful for due process. I'm not really sure that there's due process anymore. I don't think that that's a real thing. Enforcer 2K9 says, yo, how many people out here actually have good enough reputations themselves to stand up against accusations while pointing fingers? Glass houses? I don't even think it takes having a good reputation. I don't think that matters. All it takes is one accusation and that's it. Jay Johnson says, blessings to the chat, Patreon, gang, 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 gang. If y'all not a part of the gang gang, link is in the description. Enforcer 2K9 says another thing. Why do we always advocate for free, uh, man proven guilty, but then when we're quick to throw a man, when we're quick to, we're quick to throw a man we haven't been proved that haven't been proven guilty in jail. Stevie Montage official says um, the the still got bags for war but can't feed the poor. You've been listening to Pac, huh, I guess, huh? All right, all right. Well, let's really get into the show. Let's deep dive into it. So, here we go. Diddy's lawyer responds, and then he allegedly has sold his shares in Revolt. Let's get into it. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Now, sometimes I got to do the news whether I like it or not, right? There's breaking news. An attorney for rapper and producer Sean Diddy Combs is maintaining his innocence in the first public statement since yesterday's federal raids on his homes in Florida and California. CNN security correspondent Josh Campbell is joining us now from Los Angeles with more. Josh, give us the latest. Yeah, Wolf, well, an attorney for uh, Sean Combs blasting far, uh, federal agents who were at both residences yesterday in Miami and here in Los Angeles, blasting what they're calling a show of force by armed tactical agents. The attorney describing this as a witch hunt, uh, saying that this was a gross overuse of military level force. Still, he says that Combs is cooperating with investigators. I'll read you part of the statement. He goes on to say, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Of course, Wolf, the law enforcement action that that attorney is criticizing involved dozens of federal agents showing up yesterday at these residences. This team of federal agents, Wolf, responsible for investigating very serious federal crime. Um, what I like to do on this platform is I like to use different news sources so that we can get a, a bevy of different views. And I honestly, I, I believe that most of them are all the same. 
I don't look at CNN in too much different than I look at Fox. It's all a conglomerate. It's all a paid media source, and that's where they look to make their money based off of advertisements, right? Um, but his, his, his attorney has responded, and he's cleared up some things because we know that Diddy is not going to talk himself, which is probably one of the only smart things that he's done thus far. Uh, but his attorney basically said, listen, man, I don't know what y'all talking about. It's a lot of rumors. Um, I know I'm I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. They done. They said it's a lot of rumors, but here's the reality. Nobody is detained. Nobody is prevented from traveling. It's a lot happening out here in these streets. Uh, but the reality is that until we actually get some real charges, uh, we're going to reserve saying anything beyond this. But nobody is detained and nobody is prevented from traveling. Thanks. Sean Diddy Combs, music mogul. I'm the definition. Hey, hold on. Y'all remember when, they, when he got that, though? How many people remember this? How many repeat people remember Eric Adams and everybody? Hey, everybody that showed up for this right here. Hold on. Let me put I'm sorry. I ain't even on the screen, am I? What happened? What happened to my camera? What the heck happened to my camera? How did that happen? How many people showed up in order to Diddy to get the key to the city? Y'all remember when when uh, Eric Adams gave Diddy the key to the city and everybody was celebrating? No, don't nobody remember that? Remember when y'all showed up? <laughs> How quickly things can change from a year, huh? How quickly things can change. Listen, in one year, in one year, everything can change. Everybody was in the crowd. Eric Adams, friends, family, fans. Oh, key to the city, Diddy, Diddy, key to the city. Remember all of that? No, y'all don't remember that part? It's the raid that changed your mind, right? Just a year ago, y'all was celebrating. <laughs> he don't even live in New York there. He, he came back to get the key to the city, though. <laughs> oh. Music mobile. I'm the deafest in human trafficking crimes. Two homes belonging to Combs, one in Los Angeles and one in Miami Beach, were searched Monday, according to a law enforcement source briefed on the investigation. A second law enforcement source familiar with the search warrants tells CNN agents were authorized to search his homes for documents, phones, computers, and other electronic devices. Armed vehicles descended on the property simultaneously, a precaution related to armed private security teams employed by Combs. His homes were searched by HSI, the principal investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security, with personnel stationed across the globe, which specializes in countering human trafficking focused both on rescuing victims and identifying and prosecuting suspected traffickers. This when you going to get the never mind, let me be quiet. This investigation coming on the heels of several civil lawsuits. All of them were incredibly graphic, accusing Diddy of rape, grooming, sexual assault, drugging women. There's a lot of similarities in these lawsuits. One of those from a former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, who goes by the stage name Cassie, alleging rape and physical abuse, was settled in November. In a December statement, Combs responded to the claims in all the lawsuits, saying, Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. Cassie's attorney responding to Monday's searches and the investigation. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Another lawsuit filed in February by a former employee, producer Rodney Jones, who goes by the stage name Lil Rod, accusing Combs of, among other things, sexual assault. Lil Rod. Lil Rod. <sighs> Shout out to Lil Rod. I know a little Rod. He decided that he wanted to change his name now. He don't want that nickname. Matter of fact, I should call him. I don't even know if he got my new number. 
I know a little Rod. Let me see if he if I got his number. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Hold on. Let me see something. <laughs> I know a little right. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. Oh, he at work. He at work. All right, he at work. I got it. I got it. He at work. He don't want to. Uh... <laughs> he said, I'm busy. He said, I'm in a meeting. I'm going to call you right back. I think you're going to change his name. I need to change his name on my phone from Lil Rod. Let me continue. I'm sorry. The musician was not at either home at the time. His whereabouts still unknown. This is a huge stain on his reputation, to say the least. And this really feels like a fall from grace for one of the biggest stars and moguls in the music world. Now, of course, Wolf, the big question, what, if anything, did investigators find at either residence in Miami and here in Los Angeles? And how might that information factor into this ongoing criminal investigation? As of right now, Wolf, investigators aren't saying. All right, Josh Campbell reporting for us. Thanks for all that. Uh, let's bring an attorney and legal affairs commentator, Ariva Martin, right now. Uh, Ariva, what's your read on this defiant statement from Diddy's lawyer? Well, it's something that I expected. And Wolf, when you look at the statement that Diddy himself made in December, he has been pretty uh, consistent in his statements that these allegations against him are not true and that these individuals uh, that have filed lawsuits are doing so only to try to extort money from him. That was one of the statements that uh, was made after Jones, the producer, filed his lawsuit in February. So I think it's consistent with what we're hearing from Combs' legal team. Where does this investigation, Ariva, go from here? Could Diddy actually be criminally charged anytime soon in this federal sex trafficking probe? Well, one thing we do know, Wolf, is that in order for uh, this law enforcement agency to raid both of his homes in the way that they did, they had to get a warrant. And to get that warrant, they had to present a probable cause statement before a magistrate judge. So they had to produce some evidence that they were going to find uh, you know, evidence of criminal activity in his homes. Otherwise, they would not have been able to get those a search warrant. So we do know, despite not hearing directly from these law enforcement agents, that clearly there is a criminal investigation underway and that they believe that there would be evidence of crimes in one or both of these homes. And if you read that Rodney Jones uh, lawsuit, it is replete with very, very serious and salacious allegations, uh, including allegations that uh, Combs had cameras throughout his homes where he videotaped uh, himself and others having sexual activity uh, with sex workers and in some cases even underage girls. So uh, there are some very serious allegations that have been made against Sean Combs. Let me uh, look at this really quickly. I just want to see something. How much is Lil Rod trying to get? How much money is he trying to get? $30 million? Thirty million dollars. Little Rod trying to get thirty million dollars. Hold on, let me pull this up. Y'all not gonna believe me. He name dropped Prince Harry and court documents against Bad Boy Records founder Diddy uh, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones filed a thirty million. I guess he got. Listen, he got the same number as Cassie going out here in these streets. He said, "I want the same amount of money as Cassie." I want the same amount of money as Cassie. I want the same deal. All right. He says a uh, $30 million lawsuit last month citing that he participated in, that he participated in acts such as sexual misconduct, grooming, and trafficking. A grown man said he got trafficked. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, according to the docs, Jones claimed that the Duke of Sussex 39 and other A-listers affiliation added to Diddy's legitimacy. Goes on to say, um, hold on, hold on, let me see. Holmes ambushed 
law enforcement that he was spotted pacing back and forth outside of Miami Airport. And then I heard that he sold revolt. So according to multiple different outlets, including Billboard, Billboard, this is from Billboard directly, says that Sean D. P. Diddy Combs or Sean Diddy Combs. How did he get this name, Diddy? Has reportedly agreed to, to, to a deal to sell his stake in Revolt TV after stepping down from his role as chairman in November uh, amid sexual assault allegations. Uh, according to TMZ, so I guess TMZ is the most credible news source, Combs sold his remaining shares of Revolt to an anonymous buyer. The report notes that the company will remain black-owned. Financial terms of the deal wasn't disclosed. The Revolt TV's new owner is reported to be keeping her identity heat hidden for the next few weeks, but will eventually have a formal introduction as the head of media of the media company at a later date. The deal was reportedly finalized this week. Uh, Revolt's current CEO and brand chief officer will remain in their roles for the time being. Uh, of course, we know about the raids. Okay. All right. So TMZ is the one that's reporting it. This is where everybody getting his news from. We want to cite our sources like we in school. TMZ is basically reporting that he sold his shares. And we don't know if this is true or not, but this is what they're reporting. So this is what we're going to go off of. I'm just waiting on the evidence. How long do we have before we start to get the evidence and we can actually see an arrest? That's all I'm asking. How long before we get to the evidence and we can actually see an arrest? I think it's a much bigger play. I think that he's just a pawn. I think that he's a pawn. I honestly believe that he's a pawn. And I seen somebody yesterday that was in my comments. And you know who they cited? Aubrey O'Day. <laughs> they cited Aubrey from making a band. Well, when he does, if he does, if it ever happens, I will be here to report on it. And then we will mine out the evidence that's being presented against him. Uh, and we will evaluate that. We will evaluate it. So... I'll, I'll stay on top of it. Uh, he's going to continue to be the talk of the town. Linda Ford says, Anton, I want, I want to say you need to really do your research because Didi ain't who you think. Who do I think he is? Who, who do I think he is? Well, I'm trying to understand. Who do you think that I think that he is? What what gives you the perspective the, 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 this perception that I think something differently than I already think? Who do I think he is? I'm trying to understand that. Somebody help me to understand who exactly do I think that Diddy is? <laughs> I I don't know if y'all actually paying attention. Are y'all hearing the words that's coming out of my mouth? The only thing that I'm advocating for is due process. That's it. Due process. I don't know where y'all getting that crossed up. All I want to know is C is due process. I don't have an opinion of him one way or another. I've never done business with him. I don't care about Diddy. All I want to see is the evidence and I want, to, I want people to go through due process. That's it. What do you think I care about him for? Anyways, uh, let's let's spin the block real quick. And I want to hear what Mace is going to say. So I just I was almost going to say. Um, I was going to play this on after hours yesterday. OK, I was going to play this on after hours and I was going to have this discussion. But then we got caught up in different conversations and debates and stuff like that. And so um, I want to 
see it because I haven't seen it, and I've seen a lot of people talking about it, and so I wanted to play it and see it for myself. Uh, this is Mace and Cameron on It Is What It Is, I guess, and they're speaking on what's going on with Diddy, and so I'm going to fast forward through it. Sponsored by Players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states. The link in the bio and down when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson. Hello, I'm doing Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. What's up, man? How you doing? Killer, I'm doing good, man. Reparations is getting closer and closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to <laughs> give you your percentage. <laughs> I got nothing to do with that money. That's all yours, man. I was on the next boat. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Closer and closer. Closer huh, man? and closer. Okay. <laughs> The big no, payback. You know, you, this has been the last year has really kind of been the big payback for you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of. Uh, last week, you went destiny. <laughs> yeah, you went destiny. <laughs> you know no. what? You know what happened yesterday, right? Yeah, man. That's what I'm trying to say. What, it's going what, crazy. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you start. What did you see that happen? Oh, yesterday was the anniversary of Biggie Small's album, 27 years yeah. later. That's what I see yesterday. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, that was real. It's amazing that 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 all of this would transpire on that on that day. What's crazy is is yesterday was Biggie Small's 27th anniversary of Life After Death. And it was also the Diplomat Immunity album, 21st anniversary. Mm. Shit, it's shit going on. It's <laughs> going on. Man. Yeah, man. I was just saying this. I think oh, yesterday man. was kind of that's eerie, yeah, man. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. It was just yeah, that going was on. crazy. That's kind of crazy, man. I had no idea that you know the internet lets you know because I don't be knowing these dates for my albums or other people's albums, but they will remind you, man. Yeah. That's all you see. Ain't a lot. <laughs> well, that's what I, I see. Seen, that's what I always I've seen helicopters <laughs> all kind, kind uh, of stuff. Okay. It's a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Well, I'm happy you guys are having a great day and a great Let me see if there's anything else in this before I react to it. Great couple of days. So, boom. When speaking on Travis Hunter and Shador. Okay. So, let me let me just say this. Let me get my thoughts off on this. Uh, I think that Mace is probably closest, one of the closest people to this that can have a valid opinion about how he feels about the situation, right? And I didn't hear Mace say anything um, derogatory or anything like that. And Mace is having a hell of a run. I mean, let me just give Mace a round of applause. Mace is give, having a hell of a run. I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's phenomenal. And I think it is what it is, is a, is a awesome show. Now, with that being said, let me say this also. I think that people are fickle. I think that people are absolutely fickle. And one of the reasons that I think that people are fickle is because, and I said this earlier, but wasn't nobody even rocking with Mace. Y'all turned on Mace. Now y'all love Mace again? <laughs> when Mace left, don't leave when you hot. That's how May screwed up. Ain't that what, what Ye said? And that was a quote. That was a quotable. Remem remember when y'all turned on Mace and y'all y'all said that he was a cornball and he was whack for leaving and going to the church? I bet y'all forgot about that part too. No, nobody remember that? When I was actually rocking with Mace and I was like, listen, he deserves his his time to actually be able to make a decision and, and find God or whatever it is. Now it's all oh God protected Mace from what was going on. Come on, man. 
Come on, man. The general public was not rocking with Mace when he decided to leave and go to church. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Y'all turned on Mace. Y'all turned on Mace. Y'all did. Y'all absolutely did. And matter of fact, not only did y'all turn on him, but y'all criticized him when he came back with the welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. And y'all was not rocking with Mace. Y'all was not rocking with Mace. Y'all did not. No, you didn't. No, you was not. Absolutely wasn't. And y'all was criticizing him and y'all was saying that, um, what is he doing on the pulpit and how could he be preaching the word of God and Y'all was talking about him. Y'all absolutely was talking about Mace. Man, I just can't believe that people is just, they got such short memories of what it was that they was doing and what they were standing on. Y'all turned on Mace. Everybody loved Mace. Y'all loved Mace the whole time. Y'all didn't call him a fake pastor. Y'all didn't say, what is he doing on the pulpit? Y'all didn't say that this was his play in order to get, get money. Now y'all love him again. I don't have a problem with Mace having an opinion because Mace was actually, he actually knows Diddy in real life. He's probably the most valid out of everybody to be able to give his perspective or his opinion about it. And even in that, he never wished jail on him. He just said, listen, reparations is, is about to be due. I have zero problem with what Mace is saying as far as him having an opinion on who it is that he dealt with and at some point had business ties or a relationship with or all of that. But the point that I'm making is that people are fake. The point that I'm making is that people are fake. Listen, if y'all depending on the culture to hold y'all down, don't. Don't. Don't depend on the culture to hold y'all down at all. People will flip on you, and then if you start to win again, they will come back and all of that. People are fake. The, the culture is absolutely fake. What up, love is the word. The culture is fake. The culture is absolutely. You know, I see people today. I see people today that did a live stream about me, and then they be emailing me for a coaching call today. I seen a guy that showed up on my Monday night platform and I didn't say nothing. I didn't say one word. I knew who he was. I seen him say some negative stuff about me online. And the next thing you know, he was trying to promote his channel on my live stream saying, Anton, I rock with you. Word? You didn't rock with me last year when the whole pearly things dropped off. You didn't rock with me last year. That's the same thing that I see happening. It's the same thing that I see happening. The culture is trash. Everybody fake. Everybody is, is fair weather fans. And people switch up every day, and then they have a short memory. They don't remember who they voted for. They don't remember who they talked about. They don't remember who they had beef for. They don't remember who they had smoke for. But see, they didn't know that you was going to still be winning. They didn't know that you was still going to be winning. They didn't. They forgot. I didn't forget, though. I didn't forget, though. I just deleted the email. Nah, we not going to do no coaching calls. We good. We straight. No beef, no smoke. We not going to do no coaching calls. Nope. I don't reach out to the people. Um, I don't reach out to people that I didn't rock with. Uncle Luke said it on Forgotten Kings. Let me pull it up. I'll pull it up really quickly. No worries. Let's see. Uncle Luke, Forgotten Kings. Um... Man, this is a long, long thought, long little rant. This is a long rant. I'll see if I can play some of it and we'll go from there. 
Let's see if it shows. When you sign up to these major companies, these major corporations, and they make you a billionaire, and you're doing all kind of wild shit around them and all kind of wild shit with them, and they make you a billionaire. They feel like they made you. They feel like they made you. So when you go rogue and you get to the point where you you go to talking that shit about suing them and 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 acting like and talking all that wild shit about you this and you that and you suing them and they treating you some kind of way and when you go rogue, them people coming. What's up everybody? This is the world. Okay, you know, let me know your thoughts. Where I mean, y'all tell me how y'all feel about the Diddy situation. I ain't going to be out there piling on the man. That's fucked up. You know, I don't, I don't wish that shit on nobody. Mm. It's obvious that uh, he has some situations happening. And uh, people are out there and he got to deal with it. But I'm I'm curious to ask y'all something, right? When the last time y'all seen any federal organization raid a motherfucker house in the daytime? <laughs> I said the same thing. In the I said the same thing. I dog. I said the same thing. But nobody want to ask the questions. The only thing that people want to do is automatically just say this, that, and that. I said the same thing. Let me just play it. In the broad daylight. They normally come, when the fans come, they be like four o'clock in the morning when you sleep and shit. And then don't they raid your house? And they have a search warrant and they have something they want to lock you up. That's kind of interesting to me. You know, they all the guns and the tanks and shit for some cell phones. <laughs> and the news organizations was called. Helicopters was already circling. Reporters was already set up. They made sure that they pulled the kids out and cuffed them and brought them out in front of the cameras. They didn't sit them down. They didn't sit them down on the floor in the kitchen. They didn't sit them down on the floor in the hallway. They made sure that they pulled both children out, cuffed them, and put them in front of the cameras. And they had news crews and organizations in both locations at the time that it happened at both times. Come on, man. Come on. And they had their big jackets on and they skinny jeans. And they had their they glasses and they was all talking outside in front of the cameras and then conversating with each other. Come on, man. Y'all telling me that this is just this is just what we seeing on the news. That's just that's just I know I'm you know I'm a, I'm I'm from the hood. And I know boy Back in the days, you were doing some wild shit. Then you had to worry about them people coming at night, at early in the morning. You know what I'm saying? They come while your ass sleep, and then they come and get you. Because they want to have a conversation with you. Even in the movies. Then they let you fly Even off in the fucking movies, too, right? they raid at night. Broad daylight, 12 o'clock in the daytime. I'm, I'm uh, going through a lot of documents in this garage. See, I keep all the documents. All the documents. You never know when you need them. Especially the release forms. See, the difference is I used to uh, let, me let, me, let me just say this, right? If there was anybody hurt or anybody violated or anybody treated any type of way uh, or by, by anybody in any of them situations, 
you know, that shit go to court and it comes out. And if your ass did something wrong, then your ass need to go to go to jail. Right? I'm a firm believer of that because, you know, everybody got daughters. Ain't nobody want nobody violating their daughter. Facts. But at the same time, we have to understand that there's some trifling people out here. There's some people out here that are trying to get over. I've had many, I, me personally, I've had many people, right? I've had people try to get over on me. I've had people say, oh, Luke hit me in the head with a bottle. Uh, Luke hit me and beat me up. Uh, this Luke baby. Uh, Luke did this. But see, I was a smart dude. That's why when y'all see the freak Nick and all that, and y'all see all this footage, and, 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 and you'll probably see Galveston, and you'll see... Uh, Daytona Beach. I filmed everything. Yep, me too. They tried to jam me up in South Carolina. The woman then went on stage and did some wild shit. And then all her friends started talking about she did some wild shit. Then she go to the law talking about, oh, Luke did this to me. And then I had a release form. The police called me up and said, yo. Mind you, I never do nothing. I always stand to the side. Yo, still I have a lady that's filing a complaint. And I say, I got a release form of the individuals who signed the release to get on stage and dance with the girls. Uh, I'm a, here is her name on this list. Bam. Yeah. Matter of fact, and I got video. So don't come to me with that shit. Protect yourself, fellas. Protect yourself, fellas. Be very careful. Don't put yourself in a bind. Make sure you, you get consent, release forms, consent forms, non-disclosure agreements, and uh, just one more thing, confidentiality agreements. Make sure you get them all, and make sure you get everything, get, get them signing it on camera, the whole nine yards. Don't even put yourself in a position uh, at all. Don't even put yourself in that state at all. So, shout out to Uncle Luke. Let me read some of these super chats, and then we're going to continue over with the show. Big One of Dove says, would be crazy if Mason Cam bought his shares for to revolt? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't see any value. Like, I, I don't think that revolt is that awesome. So, Debt Free Dad says, the new W-2 is keeping me busy, but it's a blessing to go from a job loss to a 50% loss in income to making the highest salary that I ever made in a six month period. Keep up the good content, fam. Shout out to my, my chasers. <laughs> Shout out to my chasers. Yes, 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 yes. Shout out to my chasers. And uh, running it up. Con congratulations, my friend. Mr. Undisputed says, Ezra Miller was, was accused and nothing happened to him. I don't trust these people. This is a case of trying to put someone in their place. Well, we're going to find out, ain't we? And I'm definitely going to put it on my radar, and I'm going to remind y'all, and we're going to have this conversation later on, all right? Let's continue over with the show. Let's talk about uh, Chicago, all right? Chicago. So I reported on this a while ago, and I told y'all that Chicago, Chicago, Brandon Johnson had been proposing the same thing that they're doing over in California as far as basically a wealth tax. Uh, additional monies uh, from people that have a certain net worth and that sell certain properties to be taxed on you so that you can continue to contribute your money into social services. And then they're going to frame it like they're using the money over to uh, give it to the homeless or something like that, right? Well, the voters decided that that's not what they wanted to do. And then Brandon Johnson responded as a result of it. So make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and uh, turn on your notifications. Let's get to this. It's called Bring Chicago Home. That was the name. Let's, let's first say that... <laughs> let's first say this, okay? Um, <laughs> I 
Chicago, shout out to you of making sure that y'all had the, mo the lowest voter turnout rate in 80 years. The lowest voter turnout rate in Chicago in 80 years. Let me look at this voter turnout rate. One point five million registered voters in Chicago. The lowest voter turnout rate in 80 years. Wow. Wow. Seventeen through twenty four ages, seventeen through twenty four amounted to 3% of the total votes total. 65 through 74 age groups showed up in the greatest numbers, only casting 70,000 ballots. Let me give a round of applause to Chicago. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yo, the biggest issues as meaningful to y'all Y'all decide that y'all don't even want to show up, and then y'all let y'all let everybody else determine what's gonna happen to you. Shout out to Chicago, y'all y'all are something else. Let's see what uh, Mayor Johnson had to say about this. He had a whole press conference about this. Good afternoon. I asked your life to disappear, and they rode deep. Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Transportation Department, and last but not least, Jose Tarado. Peace and commitment, see and ensure to all of them. So please just indulge me. Let's. Also today, City Council, we honored and celebrated Women's History Month, a month where we recognize the contributions. Also want to take this moment, especially to recognize all of the women, lay business, our council, our true love, compassion, and Let me ask you what I hope is a quick question before I get to my question. Have you gotten a readout from the FOP hearing today? I have not. All right, thank you. Uh, could you talk about what you saw there? Because well, all the results. <laughs> I really love the commentating, by the way. Um, so first of all, all the results are uh, the votes have not been counted. So uh, we that has not been declared just. Well, it's been declared as of now, but this is his conference of what he was saying. Yeah. You know, look, there are 68,000 people who are unhoused. That's the focus. One in four black children will experience homelessness in the city of Chicago throughout their education career. Um, that, that's the primary focus here. That's the issue that we have to solve. And, you know, no one said it was going to be easy, you know, but the, the fact of the matter is in this moment that you have, you know, very low turnout. It's incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we are engaging the people of Chicago in a way that, that, that maximizes uh, the, the fullness of democracy. You know, so you know, the quarter of a billion dollars that I've dedicated to the unhoused, the brand new chief homelessness officer. Um, chief the homelessness last I checked officer. though, um, that the, the people of Chicago are, are still very much committed to, it, to, to addressing and solving this issue. So very much committed, the fight still goes on. Chief homeless officer. Chicago, did you know that y'all had a chief homeless officer? How much does a chief homeless officer make? Yo, what up? I'm on a live stream. Oh, hey, we just got on break. All uh, right, no worries. Hey, do y'all still call Rod, Lil' Rod? Um, I've always called him Rod, but everybody else still calls him Lil' Rod, yeah. So he still responds to Lil' Rod? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing, I was just wondering. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue, y'all. Did y'all know that y'all had a chief homeless officer? You know what usually happens when you start to, to levy these taxes against, taxes against the people? What usually happens is um, 
the money starts to go to administrative purposes. So it goes to buildings, it goes to uh, health care, it goes to new positions that they created. It goes to all of this. The budget don't actually go towards helping people or solving for the problem. It all goes into a pot that then never gets reduced. So you never get lower taxes. You continue to go to get the taxes and nothing ever changes. People are still homeless. How, would, how do you solve for homelessness? Somebody give me the insight. How do you solve for homelessness? It's $150,000 for the chief homeless officer. The chief homeless officer makes $150,000. Seriously? Tell me y'all lying. Tell me y'all lying. Y'all got to be lying. There's no way that you're going to sit here and tell me that the chief homelessness officer makes $150,000. i am looking it up right now. Let me play this. Um, given how integral Green Chicago Home has been to your mayoral agenda, should the referendum's outcome, whatever it is, also be a referendum on your administration and the progressive movement to in charge? All right, so we, we have abolished um, sub-minimum wage. Um, we wow, are the largest true. space right now where paid time off is available to so many people. Treatment, not trauma. Opening up mental health clinics. Again, a quarter of a billion dollars into the unhoused. Uh, $100 million in violence prevention. Um, making sure that we actually have an elected, fully elected representative school board. The progressive agenda is not dedicated to one issue. This is the unique thing about running an entire city of Chicago. You get to address everything and we're doing that we're doing that we're still strong um and to follow up on that if it loses what's next will you go to springfield will you try again in november we're going to keep organizing now we're going to keep organizing look you all know who i am right we're, we're going to keep organizing again the results are not in but i can tell you this though where where this issue is um, where the greatest impact of those who are experiencing uh, being unhoused, there are a lot more yeses there. A lot more yeses. So, you know, we have to continue to organize to make sure that- If anybody wants to apply for the chief homelessness officer position, uh, here are the details, all right? I'm gonna break it up for you. Salary of the position is $150,000 a year. And interested act, well, we, we don't care about that. Uh, so I guess they already got one because uh, you got to you had to submit it by October 25th. So they, apparently they already got a chief homelessness officer. Here's the qualifications, at least uh, 10 years minimum years related work experience or equivalent combination of, ex uh, of education and experience, which exhibits the ability to perform satisfactorily uh, in the position required. What related work working with homeless people? I don't I don't. Experience coordinating multiple governmental agencies in the development, planning, and implementation of strategy, policy, solutions, and programs aimed at addressing racial and social inequalities. Let me say that again. Experience coordinating multiple government agencies, governmental agencies, in the development, planning, and implementation strategy, policy, solutions, and programs aimed at addressing racial and social inequalities. So we got us a diversity, equity, and inclusion position here, guys. Uh, demonstrated leadership and results in achieving public policy, uh, achieving a public policy objective requiring policy development and operational activation across multiple actors. C student, I don't really know what that means. Bachelor's degree from an accredited four-year college or university, master's degree preferred. Uh, knowledge and skills and abilities. Ideal candidates will possess the following. Ability to understand, interpret, and utilize data and research on homelessness. Okay. Expertise within housing and homelessness ecosystem, including knowledge of key partners, funding streams, and primary drivers of homelessness. So you got to understand why people become homeless in the first place. Demonstrated leadership and experience in at least one intersectional issue area such as Housing, finance, immigration, uh -huh. Uh -huh. immigration, legal services, civil rights protections, children and youth services, health care, workforce development, gender based violence, justice reform or economic empowerment, history of effective cross sector coalition 
and consensus building across diverse stakeholders, including service providers, advocates, and funders. Lived experiences of homelessness. What? Okay, let me, let me, <laughs> let me read that again. Lived experiences of homelessness, housing instability, and or issues at the intersection of homelessness are deeply valued. So basically you had to be homeless before. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Mm. We're bringing our neighbors along who may not be as impacted by this issue. Um, but, you know, to be the mayor of the city of Chicago, where I once upon a time took an arrest at the very, er, at the very elevators that now are held for me. This is the greatest city in the world. There's not a fight that, that Cap. we have not taken on that we won't have the ability to win. And that's the important thing here. And the progressive agenda, again, from dealing with um, mental health, um, dealing with education, dealing with workers, that progressive agenda is expansive as it should be. 40 plus years, decades of disinvestment. And um, I'm grateful that we have a lot of people who are committed to seeing the transformation that propelled me into office. Afternoon, Mayor. Um, yesterday's election, there were three ballot referendums, the 13th, 23rd, and 36th Ward, where voters overwhelmingly uh, voted to call on the city to reopen additional police districts in response to lagging response times. Um, is that something that you are open to adding additional police districts, um, especially in the 12th and 8th district that have seen really expansive uh, police districts and had trouble getting people to 911 calls uh, promptly? Well, there's been a lot of cuts over the course of decades in this city, as you know, from closing of schools, public housing, uh, mental health clinics, you know, our approach to public safety is holistic. And so, you know, my deputy mayor for community safety is here. Um, our approach is comprehensive. And policing is just one, one tool in the toolbox to address um, public safety in this city. Translation, no, we're not going to reopen any of these precincts and no, you're not going to get more police officers. Listen, when you hear somebody throw this word salad at you, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down for you again, because I want you to understand things from a C student's perspective. When they say that our approach to something is comprehensive, it means that, no, we're not going to do it. That's number one. The second thing that it means is they're going to throw a bunch of money at a bunch of other stuff that's not relevant to keeping you safe. When they say comprehensive, our approach to things are our approach, our approach to things are comprehensive, and uh, you know, there's there there's no one way to solve for public safety, and we have to gather around. We have to make sure that people get to church. We 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 have to make sure that we hold people accountable because there's been there's been so much disinvestment in the community. And we don't think that everything deserves a police officer when somebody calls. Sometimes, sometimes we can go over and we can make sure that we send them a therapist. Or may maybe, maybe it's the fact that they're unhoused that they, they, they decide to make sure that they get these large gatherings, you know. And so, you know, the egregious uh, disinvestment from the community, there's not one way to solve for it. There, there, there's just not. OK, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come together and we're going to have to pray. OK, we're going <laughs> we're going to have to pray. All right. And this holistic approach is everybody has to put their hands in the pot and we need to tax the rich and give it to the poor. And make sure that we're not labeling people the wrong way. What that will then in turn do is give them a greater sense of security. Uh, we need to get their be bellies fed. And when we get those bellies fed, they will be less likely to commit crime. It's not about police officers being present. It's, it's, it's more about making sure that Chicagoans understand that this is the greatest city on earth.
I mean, I, I come from a place where I used to hold the doors open for people, and now those same doors are being held open for me. And so you can't tell me that you can't pull up your bootstraps and ensure that every child has warm food in their belly and a hot cot to sleep. <laughs> and a hot hot cot to sleep, sleep to sleep on because there is no <laughs> plan how to solve coming together and comprehensively solving for crime. Never mind the nine nine one one response time. <laughs> So, um, you know, I'm willing to sit down with individuals in those particular precincts and to have further conversations about what it means to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. What does that mean? Did y'all hear the question? I want y'all to hear the question again, all right? Listen, these guys are the master of deflection. Did you hear the question and did you hear the answer? He asked him, hey, listen, are you guys going to get more police officers out there and open up this precinct or whatever? And he said... No, there's a comprehensive approach, and I'm willing to sit down and have more conversations, though. Listen, listen to what he said. Comprehensive. My, you know, uh, into districts that propelled me into ballot referendums, the 13th, 23rd, and 36th Ward, where voters overwhelmingly uh, voted to call on the city to reopen additional police districts in response. They're calling on the city to open up additional police districts. They don't have good response times. Crime is out of control. We need more police officers. Is that something that you're going to do? Are you going to open up more police districts, especially for the most impoverished and the most poverty stricken and the most crime ridden areas? Is that what you're going to do, sir? It's the lagging response times. Um, is that something that you are open to adding additional police districts, um, especially in the 12th and 8th district that have seen really expansive uh, police districts and had trouble getting people to 911 calls uh, promptly? Well, there's been a lot of cuts over the course of decades in this city, as you know, from closing of schools, public housing, uh, mental health clinics. You know, our approach to public safety is holistic. And so, you know, my deputy mayor for community safety is here. Um, our approach is comprehensive. And policing is just one, one tool in the toolbox to address um, public safety in this city. So, um, you know, I'm willing to sit down with individuals in those particular precincts and to have further conversations about what it means to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. What? Man, listen, bro, I, 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 I don't like politicians speak. That Do you know? So the question is no, and you want to talk about uh, relationship building. Is that what it is? is? Is that what you just basically, so the answer is no. Got it. Hi, Mayor. Hi. Um, last week, the Chicago Sun-Times reported on multiple archdiocese properties that Supposedly, they were offering up for free, uh, but they did not hear back from your office. Can you tell me, is the city considering those over the properties that the city's renting for, um, in some cases, over market rate? Well, first of all, it's just, it's, it's, it's inaccurate. Um, so there have been um, a number of archdiocese buildings that um, have not been suitable for this mission. I can tell you that. Um, and we're working with the archdiocese to bring one online. There's a whole lot that goes into opening up an, a shelter, and I, I can tell you I've become an expert at it. You know, we were opening up shelters once a week um, when I was first sworn in. You know, so I'm grateful that, that we have a partnership with the archdiocese, but um, it's not just as simple as here's a building, take it. There's, there's work that has to be done to build it out to make it suitable um, for, for shelter. So. Um, it's, it's not entirely accurate of how it's being portrayed, that essentially there are a lot of people who have offered up buildings, right? But it doesn't mean they were suitable for this mission. So, um, and they weren't necessarily even offered up entirely for free. In fact, part of the, the agreement um, initially was it was not offered up as free. Um, there were later conversations that it would be um, 
some flexibility with the first six months, but not, you know, in its in perpetuity. So we are still working with the archdiocese, and I'm grateful for the leadership of Cardinal Supich, um, who has been a part of these conversations as well. So I can confirm you're considering one, but no more. Right now, there is one that is close to being put online. There are considerations for lots of buildings, but again, the building has to be suitable to be able to meet the needs of this mission. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. You so I want to talk himself? a little bit about the settlements that were approved today by the City Council. $45 million for a, uh, an unauthorized police chase, uh, $5 million on top of the $55 million that's already spent on the Guevara case. What does this say about the police department and what work still needs to be done when it comes to the constitutional policing that you've been trying to address? Well, one of the things that Superintendent Selling and I speak about regularly is the type of training that we have to make available um, for officers who are coming into the force. And I'm grateful that there are scores and scores of officers who have gone through this training, many of whom have been trained by Superintendent Snelling and we're seeing better practices. Still a lot of work to be done, no doubt about that. Um, it also speaks to just the decades of, of negligence. Some of these things, as you know, predate my existence, right? They go back to a time before I was even born. Why, why, why does he continue to try to scapegoat the conversation by always blaming it on previous administrations, times before him, all of that? Listen, man, just answer the question. That's all we want to do is get to the answer of the question. Every single answer that he gives literally takes like three, four minutes. Born. Um, so there's a lot of time that, that has elapsed uh, over the course of decades now where this has become an erosion and working erosion. with our new superintendent who I have confidence in to not only provide you know, training uh, for our officers to ensure that constitutional policing is the prevailing form of governance, but also making sure that we are responding to emergencies in a holistic way. There are certain instances where law enforcement is showing up and it's not a law enforcement response. That's why I'm committed to growing our treatment, not trauma, you know, operation and working with advocates so that we can have mental health providers that are showing up to non, um, showing up to scenes where mental health professionals um, are a better response to the crisis. Can y'all imagine, just, just, just roll with me here for a second, guys. Can you imagine you call 911? You're looking for the police. Hey, man, I need you to come out here. They assess your situation based off of what you tell them, and they say, listen, ha, you, my, you, my friend, you don't even need the police. You know what you need? A mental health professional. You need a therapist. You need a psychologist. Uh, you need somebody, some lady that can come over there and better assess and break down for you guys how you guys can solve for the issues that you need. So listen, we're going to send uh, a, a, czar, a czar over there, and we're going to solve for your issues. They're on their way. No ambulance, no police officer. Listen, you guys need to learn how to come together and hold each other in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, SS29. I know about it. They tried that in New York. They abandoned that fast. Oh, my God. This is so silly. Shout out to Chicago. For everybody that's still in Chicago, God bless you. I love you guys. You guys are really, really fighting a good fight over there uh, in Chicago. Let me read a couple of cash apps real quick. And then I want to read this super chat also. Shout out to uh, Chase Barnes. Chase Barnes says, so what? The homeless have a CEO? Say it ain't so. And they make $150,000 a year. And they make $150,000 a year. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. $150,000 a year. Shout out to uh, Derek Gilbert says, thanks, Anton. Derek G in the building. Shout out to Derek G. Thank you, my friend. Also, I want to give some support and some love over to my girl, Molly. Molly all in her drink. She ain't even know it. Shout out to my girl, Molly. <laughs> Tommy in the building says, salute. Salute to you, Tommy. I appreciate you on Cash App. And my dog, my girl, Jenny Jackson. 
Thanks for the Johnson impersonation. Is that what y'all like? Y'all like the Johnson impersonation? Uh, I seen a couple different comments. They said that we like the Johnson impersonation. They also like the Tiffany Henyard impersonation. I ain't heard nothing from Tiffany Henyard late, lately that would cause for me to actually address her. Uh, so we going to let her let her chill for a while. A man says no one is coming to save no one. That's a fact. I told y'all that the other day. Jones FX is in the building. Thank you, Jones FX. Says the devil wears shine. No. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh, man. Y'all so mean to Sean Diddy Combs. Anyways, let's continue over with the show. Um, a couple more things that we want to address before we get to it. Nothing left to it but to do it. So we want to stay on cities for a second. And Baltimore is again selling homes for a dollar. If anybody is interested in purchasing a home, this is not a public service announcement. This is a real thing. Baltimore is selling homes for a dollar. Again. You can get you in the whole home over in Baltimore for an hour, I mean for a dollar. You just got to deal with the extra traffic because the pier, I mean uh, the 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 key bridge is messed up now. And uh, you got to deal with some crime, a little bit of homelessness, a little bit of drugs, all of that. But listen, you can gentrify your own neighborhoods for a dollar. Yeah, they did do this before. So if you're all ready to buy a home over in Baltimore, you can get it for one buck. And I'm going to break it down for me from a business perspective of why they're doing this, Okay. They tried it before, they're trying it again. The city approved a plan to address the vacant home crisis by selling some of them for a buck. But as WBR2 News' Elizabeth Worthington explains tonight, not everyone is on board with the program. Buying a house for a buck sounds too good to be true. Well, that Now, my dog Marlo, my dog Marlo used to put bodies inside of them vacants. Y'all ain't never seen a wire? Y'all ain't never seen a wire? My dog Marlo used to put them bodies up in them vacants. Yeah, okay, come on, let's get to it. That's because it is. But the reality is you probably need more like 150 to 200,000 to complete a renovation of one of these structures. That's why the city's housing department is requiring applicants to its <laughs> newly approved fixed pricing program to provide proof they can spend at least 90 grand to renovate the home. The goal is to rehab some of the city's thousands of vacant homes. Affordable housing advocates Dr. Dwanda Farmer and Nika Namdi say the program doesn't serve the people who need it most. They're concerned about displacing longtime residents through gentrification. In the 70s, the city adopted a dollar home program, and a lot of these row homes on Fort Avenue and Federal Hill went for a dollar back then. That is the exact type of um, antidote that we don't want to see spreading into Harlem Park. Into Ma'am, ma'am, listen, as a, uh, from a person that came from Detroit, in which the city is now growing and thriving, credit rating is doing well, and I love my city. I personally moved back into downtown myself. <laughs> in which we had a similar program, right? Except for there's other things that got to go along with it that allows for it to actually be successful. Beggars can't be choosy. Beggars cannot be choosy. How can people, how can people that have nothing sit here and talk about what shouldn't be done in the neighborhood or in the, in the, in the, in the spot? I heard about tanks, uh, houses, that they burned down the houses that he was rehabbing. No, I was in a neighborhood one time. Uh, actually, I was in Yaktown. Shout out to Pontiac. Shout out to Yaktown. I was in Pontiac one time, and uh, I had bought some houses over in Pontiac. And this was back when my father was alive, and, and we was like, you know what? We're going to do some great things in the community. And we bought the houses, and we was rehabbing them. And then I came up, and all of the materials were stripped out of it that we had put into it. I said, nope, not putting another dollar up in this place, not putting another dollar in the hood. We was all for renovating and gutting and changing and trying to impact the community and all of this stuff. This was when I was young and dumb. <laughs> I was young and dumb. 
Yeah, I, I was, I was, I had my my eyes was green. I was, I was wet behind the ears. I was trying to figure out how I could help the community and pour into people and you know fix up the neighborhood and be an inspiration on the block. And they came in, and I came by. I said, "Hey, man, y'all, y'all seen anybody around here?" It was like, "Nope, nope, we ain't seen nothing." We ain't seen nothing. I said, yeah, you ain't seen nothing, huh? Nope, not at all. Not one thing. So, all right, I got you. Just went ahead, just jumped back in the car, went on home. Went on home. Let the streets have that place. Into Poppleton, into, you know, Middle East, into care. We do not, we want the people who have been the backbone of this city to actually be able to live freely That's and crazy. to live well in neighborhoods in a city that their labor and their intellectual property built i understand that looked crazy did y'all see that row did y'all see that 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 uh that b-roll footage it's into care we do not we want the people who have been the backbone of this city to actually be able to live crazy freely man. and to live well in neighborhoods in a city that their labor and I have done a lot of urban exploration in my day, and any of my early YouTube followers and subscribers on the Anti Daniels channel is aware of this. I have explored some of the most uh, destroyed hoods and places and walked around and went into abandoned buildings and houses and churches and fell through the floor, and I, I've been in a lot of places. I've been in a lot of places. I've seen and, and climbed through some of the tallest buildings abandoned hospitals, manufacturing facilities. I've flown drones to them. I've been in some of the, some of, and all across the United States of America. I've been through it in Gary, Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee. Um, I've been down uh, some places in some other states I don't want to name right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been in, well, in stadiums. I Before the Pontiac Silverdome got imploded and they built the Amazon facility over it. I, I was the last person to explore the Pontiac Silverdome. I've seen a lot of places. A lot of places. What I know is gentrification is good. <laughs> gentrification is beneficial for the community. I'm telling you this. These people need jobs. They need jobs. If you ain't got 100, 200 bands in order to go over there and redo a crib, and you can't just redo one, you gotta redo all of them. You gotta redo the whole neighborhood. You gotta remove it, you gotta create a tax base. You gotta give an incentive for the police to go over there and police that crap and not be able to get the heck up out of there. If you ain't got no bag, if you ain't just industry, jobs, all of this stuff, all of these people keep talking about this. Oh, man, we don't want things to go. Oh, gentrification, displacing people. That's displacement. Do you see that? Do you see what displacement look like? Man, y'all ever been inside of a vacant and seen a body? You ever walk through a, a, a field and seen a body in that field and you start to smell something and you, 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 you see a decomposed body? You ever been in a vacant and seen a body? And you go ahead and throw that footage away and act like you ain't never even been there before. And then you just make an anonymous call so they can go and pick the body up. You ain't never seen no junk like that before. Let me tell you something. I got, a, got out of urban explorations for more reasons than one. It wasn't just the rebrand of the new, new YouTube channel. It was like, oh, you know what? This, this, is, this is different. This one is different. You know what? Um... I think God is trying to tell me something. And then not only do you go in, but then when you're coming out, the people across the street is over there looking like this. And you're trying to act like you ain't looking at them, but you're looking at them and they looking at you. And you're looking at them and they looking at you. And they trying to figure out who you are and why you came over there in the first, man, get me up out of here, bro. You know what? This mission is done. It ain't enough money. It ain't enough views. It ain't enough YouTube been going on over here for me to continue to explore this area.
This is the devil. This is the devil's work over here. And their intellectual property built. I understand that they have a goal of driving middle income families into the city. Nope. But middle income families don't want a dilapidated house off of a block even for a dollar yeah. unless there's a real plan that's going to do whole block redevelopment. I do you Applicants want better, will Keisha. Also be subject not to only from not only from explorer to suspect, but to victim. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Explore the suspect to victim. My very last exploration. My very last exploration. I'll tell you about the it. The vetting process. The advocates we spoke to hope that's enough to weed out potential bad actors. One of my main concerns is that this will become a payday, like an you know, open door, open season for the same slumlords and the same speculators who have been keeping properties in poor condition and charging high rents in the city. In an effort to prevent that, the first 90 days of the program have been set aside strictly for buyers who plan to use the home as their primary residence. Nope. The Department of Housing and Community Development says it's already received more than 800 inquiries. But there's only under 300 homes set aside for the program right now. 800 inquiries from everybody trying to get a home for a dollar. Man, get the heck out of here. 800 inquiries. Right. The plan how many of them got more than $30 to their name? Oh, man, I got a homeboy that could do the plumbing for you, fam. We got to pull a permit for that. We don't pull permits over, and it said, okay, all right. Was approved at the city's Board of Estimates meeting on Wednesday after Dr. Farmer and Namdi expressed their concerns. The housing commissioner and the mayor said the department plans to ensure there are guardrails in place to prevent displacement down the road. In a statement, a department spokesperson says, quote, this is an important forward movement that will greatly assist in our ongoing efforts to successfully address vacant and abandoned properties in Baltimore City. They'll begin reviewing applications on April 1st. You can find a link to apply on WMAR2news.com. In Baltimore, Elizabeth Worthington, WMAR2 News. Let me tell you something, man. Stay out of that. Stay out of that. Let me, let me tell you something, bro. Look, this is the very last, the very last exploration that I've ever done in my entire life. Um... And then I actually it wasn't the last, but it was the last one that I actually recorded and that, that I put up that I made available to the general public. I'm not going to say what my last ones was, but this was the very last one that I did. The floors and stuff. They're very, very fragile because there's no roof and all of the weather and the elements have gotten in here. You can fall through the floor easily and ain't nobody going to find you if you incapacitated or knocked out or whatever at their final service when they closed the that once i fell through the flow i'm talking about falling through the flow i make the wrong step next thing you know i'm falling through the flow. i said you know what then i went i i was brave i decided to go do another exploration that started going left i said you know i'm done with exploration I'm done with exploring. I'm not going through no more flows. I'm not falling. I'm not doing nothing. I'm done. Time is up. Time is up. Once I fell through the flow, listen, I'm telling you that I've lived this life. <laughs> I lived this life. When you take two steps forward and then you go three steps under, I'm telling you that I've lived this life, all right? So uh, shout out to Baltimore for trying to sell homes for a dollar. Well, you got to have some balls. You got to have some balls for that one. Hello? Hey, what's going on? Who is this? Oh, what's going on? I'm chilling, chilling. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, baby girl? Yeah, I can kick it with you. Let me, uh, I'm going I'm to call you right after I get off my live stream. All right, bye. All right, y'all. Nope, I'm not letting it play. I'm not letting it play. If y'all want to see all of my urban exploration videos, they out there. 
they're out there. Like, I, I'm telling you, look, I've explored some of the craziest spaces. Y'all see a lot of y'all not familiar with my with my YouTube history out here in these streets. Um, but I've 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 been around the block for a while, man. When I say I'm an OG YouTuber, I am an OG YouTuber. Like OG. OG YouTuber. I have not been everywhere. I didn't did everything. I didn't explored the spaces. I didn't seen stuff. I didn't did stuff. I didn't removed some places that I explored. I I've lived it all. I've absolutely positively lived it all. And I've documented the process along the way. And it's crazy. It's crazy when I look at some of this old stuff. Maybe I'll maybe I'll even open it up and I'll pull it put it back up there. Listen, here I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. This is six years ago right here at the Pontiac Silverdome. That one did seven hundred thousand views. Um, the Packer plant before they tore that down. That's that right there. Um, this is the AMC American Motors Company that did forty six thousand views. I explored that. That was back in bike life. Uh, that was one of my motorcycles. That's the Jeep that I had bought. So that was a long time ago. Um, let me see. Getting carjacked. Yep, this is me exploring an old church, flooded an abandoned church in Detroit. Um, this is inside of the crumbling General uh, General Motors Fisher body plant. Yep, I explored all of that. This was the Lexus that I bought six years ago, right there. See, a lot of people don't realize that I I've, I've been around for a very long time. Like I explored churches, hospitals. Um, some people said that they was even born there. That's a middle school. This is a hospital, an insane asylum slash hospital. This is uh, me climbing through an old hospital right here, old high schools, right? I found a bunch of trading cars inside of the former Cadillac stamping plant. This is an old church that I had did, a huge church that I did. This is another old high school. Heidelberg, Flint, Michigan, exploring that. 16 floors of the abandoned. Like, I've done it all. I've literally done it all. And a lot of these videos is five and six years ago. So, yeah, man, I done seen it. I did it. This is another abandoned high school. All of that stuff. So, yep, I've done it all. I've seen it all. All of this stuff that people is talking about that they doing and that they wanted to do, I done already did it. So, yeah, man, I didn't been through all of it. Let me read some of these super chats, and then we're going to continue over with the show. Because uh, I got one more thing that I want to share with you guys. A lot of people are not familiar with a lot of these videos, but that, that's OG. Like, that's stuff that I didn't been around and did for a long time. Nope, I'm not replaying the video. If you want my old stuff, go go watch the old stuff. AJY says, nobody squatting in a, hundred, in a dollar home. Right, why y'all ain't squatting in a dollar home? Biz Q says, I didn't know you did that. That's because a lot of people is just now discovering. They not really, they not really familiar that Anton is an OJ YouTuber. <laughs> Anthony Taylor says, one dollar homes look like the set on the walking dead. <laughs> uh, a man says, AD, you said that correctly, sir. Shout out to you, my friend. Skittle says. Anton, you look like you was auditioning for the new Final Destination movie. I felt like I was in Final Destination. My leg was bleeding and junk like that. It was crazy. Um, Wealth Building Journey says, Tom, people were taking the city up on their offer, but so many thieves were robbing their investments that it drove all of the investors away. You got to have really, really deep pockets and thick skin and a love for the community to want to redo an entire, entire block. Uh, shout out to the happy girl in the building. Yes. 
Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Nope, nope, nope. I had some compelling. Listen, I've been a great compelling content creator for a long time. For a very, very, very long time. All right, y'all. Uh, last but not least, um, I think that we can go a little bit more entertaining. Don't you think? I think we should go a little bit more entertaining. So, strip clubs. Strip clubs. Why not go all the way down a, down a rabbit hole? Just discover me, Cherry Q, three months ago. Oh, man, you got a lot to learn about me. Strip clubs is being accused of drugging men. <gasps> Say it ain't so. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Let's get to it. Tonight, a Fox 10 Investigates exclusive. A lawsuit claims three Valley strip clubs used an elaborate scheme to charge customers credit cards for excessively high amounts without authorization. Nearly 20 alleged victims sued these clubs, claiming they were drugged and robbed in VIP rooms. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live now with a story you will only see here on Fox 10. Left incapacitated, waking up lost and confused to find several credit card transactions worth tens of thousands of dollars. That's how plaintiffs describe what happened to them at three clubs. The total amount of money charged between them easily clears a million dollars. The alleged victims feeling violated and stripped of peace of mind. Look at the look at the B-roll footage. Within the nightlife of the valley is a two-mile stretch from Loop 202 down North Scottsdale Road. And this is in Arizona, y'all. This is in Arizona. Past McDowell. Some looking to stay out after dinner and drinks. Take a drive, and you'll notice three strip clubs on this stretch: Dream Palace in Tempe, Skin Cabaret, and Bones Cabaret in Scottsdale. All three are now at the center of a civil lawsuit referred to as sister clubs. The latest complaint and demand for a jury trial filed back in January. The complaint accuses the ownership of racketeering and conspiracy, as well as several other allegations. There are now nearly 20 plaintiffs in the case. And we spoke to two who want to remain anonymous. We'll call the first alleged victim. Oh, these ain't nothing but white men. Hey, white men, y'all been getting, because I could tell by his mustache. You want to see his mustache? Look. We spoke to two. Who want to remain anonymous? Look at that! Look at that white man. That ain't nothing but a white man. I don't even have to hear his voice. I know that's a white man. One hundred percent, that's a white man. Absolutely. Yep. White man been getting finessed in Atlanta. Now y'all getting finessed over in Arizona too. And one of the reasons why guys don't feel compelled to come forward with these allegations that they've been finessed is because they embarrass. Guys are embarrassed, and they're not in court encouraged to come forward. To say, hey, man, it's these chicks and they've been finessing us. They've been drugging our drinks. Next thing you know, they're going to tell me that they spent tens of thousands of dollars on me. Nope. We'll call the first alleged victim, mustache. Joe. Joe says he and his friends were at Bones Cabaret four years ago when he got separated after going to the bathroom. I remember kind of walking through what I thought was like a cloud of like either perfume or makeup or something. Yep. Uh, like dusty uh, from one of the kind of like cracks of lights that was kind of coming through. Um, and that's when I ended up actually in a VIP room and started to get these symptoms that felt not alcohol related. Hold on, sir. How did you end up in a VIP room? You went through dust and then all of a sudden you ended up in a VIP room. <laughs> Listen, I don't believe in victim shaming. And I think that these organizations, if the alleg allegations are true, need to be held accountable. But first of all, man, listen, bro. Listen, bro, you're not just going to say that you ran through a, through a cloud and then ended up in a VIP room. Sir, did you go to the VIP room or no? Did she lead you down this dark hallway in order to get you in the VIP room or no? Or no? You know what? I just ran through a, a cloud and then I just so happened to end up in the VIP room. <laughs> Oh, man. Something else. Do you believe you were drugged? I do, yes. Joe confirms he did not take a drug test, nor did other plaintiffs in the case. But they all say they became incapacitated after entering VIP rooms. Mm. I felt like I kind of didn't have control 
of the situation. That was really the first instance that I knew. Joe says he couldn't get out of the VIP room while his friends couldn't get in before he was moved to Dream Palace. The next day, he discovered several charges on multiple wait, 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 to Dream what? Palace. He was moved to Dream Palace? Hold on, let me back up for one second. I just got to get the full details. I want to know all of the story. VIP room while his friends couldn't get in before he was moved to Dream Palace. The next day, he discovered several charges on multiple credit cards. How much was the total? Just under $72,000. Joe's not alone. Fox 10 obtained Scott. $72,000? Hold on. It ain't nothing in that club. That's even worth $7,200. He said he was charged $72,000? Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. Nah, man, that's a crime. That ain't nothing but a finesse. Total? Just under $72,000. Joe's not alone. Fox 10 obtained Scottsdale police reports specifically linked to the clubs mentioned in the lawsuit. In September of 2021, a financial crimes detective says he started seeing many cases reported by alleged victims detailing common bands. factors like VIP rooms, having memory loss, signing and thumbprinting paperwork, photos taken of them, and extremely high credit card charges. Reports say patrons visited from several different states telling police they were brought into these VIP rooms. Just confused, felt lost, spaced out. I had no, no clue where I was at that point. All Another plaintiff we'll call Bobby describes the same experience. Bobby admits to only two transactions he agreed to, paying for drinks and a private dance. But after that, he says he authorized nothing else at Skin Cabaret. He later found eight transactions on his credit card account. Didn't think that these were actually legitimate transactions at that point. It just didn't, it just seemed unconscionable that this would even happen. His total amount of charges, the highest of all the plaintiffs. $181,000. And the fallout has been traumatic. Certainly strain on not only myself, my family, uh, wife. Did he say $181,000? Hold on, hold on. What kind of, what kind of credit is y'all walking around with in y'all credit cards? Y'all walking around with 80, 100, the highest of all the plaintiffs. $181,000. Who's walking around with $181,000 worth of credit on them? Y'all going to the strip club with a $181,000 credit card limit? Jesus Christ. That's crazy. Dog, 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 dog. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do I have to cheat teach strip club etiquette right now? <laughs> what, hold on. So you telling me that they didn't call y'all and say y'all y'all card didn't authorize it? Like for, for every last one of my jump, no matter what my limit is, once it get past a certain amount, it hit me with the authorization and be like, hey, uh, sometimes they even call me. They call me and they be like, hey. This charge is really, really big, and it's something related to that ain't got nothing to do with what you usually spend the money on. Is this really you? And then they make sure that they verify that it's me. Where are y'all getting these authorizations? And it's just, yeah, yep, that's it. Yeah, credit limits can go that high. They can go that high. But my point is, where, where are, how, how are y'all getting these authorizations? Like they don't call y'all and say, hey fam, did you spend $180,000 at the strip club tonight? Bro, I got to call and get authorization sometimes to even be able to use certain cards out of town. I'll give y'all strip club etiquette in a minute. And the fallout has been traumatic. Certainly strain on not only myself, my family, uh, wife. I had to get my parents involved. Hey, moderators, uh, be careful timing people out. Don't don't time people out, y'all. Let them rock. Even if they criticize me, as long as they're not disrespectful, don't time them out. I will also tell y'all, though, that sometimes y'all not timed out. Other times, um, there are filters on because it prevents you from saying certain words. So sometimes what y'all type don't always go out in the chat because y'all may be saying some crazy stuff. So be careful about that. 
But uh, y'all, moderators, be careful, y'all. We don't time people out like that over here unless they get really, really disrespectful. Even if they disagree with me, even if they say I'm crazy or something like that, don't time them out, y'all. Let them rock. Yeah, you know, we have little children as well, so just the impact emotionally was pretty difficult to bear. Joe is in the Air Force, stationed in Arizona, now feeling the stress. It's been literally life and career altering for me. My career took a detour that off of the trajectory that I had worked hard to provide for myself. They all tell the same story, um, yet none of them have met. Rod Galarza is the attorney representing nearly 20 plaintiffs in the lawsuit. Police reports reveal how the VIP room process works. After negotiating a price with the hostess, the customer signs a contract, provides a credit card, ID, gives a thumbprint, and takes a photo. No. But as the lawsuit states, plaintiffs believe they were somehow drugged, claiming they barely remember signing any contract at all. They vaguely recall someone yelling at them to quit messing around and hold the pen properly so that they could sign uh, a document on a clipboard. Uh, alternatively being yelled at by a bouncer or a hostess to sit up straight and smile. It felt like watching a movie through my own eyes, almost an out-of-body experience because in my mind I'm screaming to myself to, this is, you know, that this is wrong to leave, to fight my way out, but they have the bouncer at the door, the disorienting hallways, like I don't think I'm going to be able to make it out. One plaintiff claims club reps approve transactions via text with credit card companies by using the Face ID function, holding the owner's iPhone in front of their face to unlock it. The complaint says Todd Borowski is the sole director, shareholder, and the president of Wisnowski Incorporated, which does business under Skin Cabaret and Bones Cabaret. In a court filing by the defendants last month, they deny all allegations. Borowski's lawyer released a statement to Fox 10 that reads in part, quote, the cases are baseless. It's like going into a casino and asking for your money back after you choose to be there. Dennis <laughs> Willinchick goes on to say that the plaintiffs were not drugged and the dancers were independent contractors, citing the signed documents and photos, saying, quote, their credit card companies also investigated and approved the transactions. Joe confirms his credit card company left him on the hook with the entire debt. They ended up holding me accountable for those uh, charges and I'm still recovering from that. Galarza says charges went beyond credit card limits for clients specifically with American Express accounts. In each mm. one of these cases, there, an, an American Express card was used, and in virtually every case, the uh, credit limit was exceeded. Bobby's Amex credit card limit was around $22,000, yet his charges totaled more than $180,000. How is that? How is that? How, did they, how is that possible? Spokesperson with Amex responded saying, quote, American Express policy is to review all disputes, including considering evidence submitted by our card members and seeking merchant support for the disputed charges. We followed our standard policies and procedures in this case. Due to pending litigation, we do not have further comment at this time. According to Galarza, the average total charges for each plaintiff is $72,000. And with nearly 20 victims, That's crazy. the sum is more than $1.1 million. Are Jesus. you still traumatized? Oh, yeah. I've done as much as I can think to compartmentalize this. I don't know how that's possible. And try to control what I can control and get over it. But it will sue you too. every time I make progress in my life to move on, I get an, e an email about it. I get a text about it. I remember that, you know, I could be able to afford X, Y, or Z or have savings built up and capitalize and have those options that I've rightfully earned, but that all got taken away from me. Scottsdale PD is aware and a spokesperson confirms police are working with the Arizona Attorney General's office on cases involving Bones Cabaret, Skin Cabaret, and Dream Palace. The AG's office declined to comment. No trial date has been set at this time. I think that's crazy, bro. That's insane. I don't even mess with American Express, to be honest with you. I don't mess with American Express at all. Um, I, I have a, I'm not going to say what I got anyway, but I don't really mess with American Express at all. That's crazy. You got a $20,000 limit and a, all right, let me give y'all strip club etiquette one-on-one. -on -one, and then we going to get y'all up out of here after I read the super chats. All right. Strip club etiquette one-on-one. -on -one. 
is never bring a card with you to the strip club in the first place. A lot of people don't know that because a lot of people are so busy trying to stunt, get booths or whatever. Um, never bring a card with you in the first place. Always bring cash. Whatever it is that you limit in the spin, that's what you take. You don't take your credit cards with you to the strip club. You don't take your credit cards with you to the casino. You don't take your credit cards with you to, to certain places. You never, ever, ever take your cards, your debit card, your credit cards, none of that stuff. Do not take it with you to any of these places. Cash only. When you go to the casino and when you go to the strip club, the only thing you take with you is whatever it is that you're ready to spend. Whatever you're ready to ball out on and just have a good time, and then you're going to wake up the next morning like, I'm an idiot, that's what you take with you. That's what you take with you. Whatever it is that you're going to spend. Well, well, Anton, why are you saying don't take a card with you? Well, number one, for most of you suckers, <laughs> for most of you suckers, right, y'all not even really supposed to be there in the first place. If your wife found out that you was out here tricking on these hoes, but you wasn't willing to buy them a bag, she going to have your balls and advice. If your girl find out that you was out here tricking on these chicks, number two, no tracking, right? Cash only. Cash only. You don't need anything that brings heat back to you in any way, shape, and possible. Cash only. And you want to make sure that you get in the cash before you start drinking. That way, if you lose the money, it's no harm, no foul, because that's what I intended to go with in the first place. Okay? All of y'all keep using y'all debit cards and y'all credit cards for these unsavory transactions. It is going to come back to you. A lot of y'all be taking y'all corporate cards with y'all. Y'all just bring y'all whole wallets. Then you're going to end up like them. Then you're going to end up like them. All right? So listen. Nothing. Don't bring nothing. Nothing with you. ID. Cash. ID. Cash. All right? Stop bringing your car with you inside of the credit. And one of the reasons, and, and also for the casino, because you don't ever want to go back to the ATM. You don't want to go and do some authorizations. And No, we're not doing that. Look, we going in there. We're going to have a good time. Whatever it is that I brought, that's what it is that I'm going to spend. And we're going to leave it at that. And we're going to go home. And we're going to wake up tomorrow. And we're going to do the same thing over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, I'm not encouraging anybody to go to the strip club. But what I am saying is uh, protect yourself at all times. Protect yourself at all times, all right? Um, oh, snaps. I just got a uh, text message. Give me a second. Call me. All right, hold on. Let me see. Read the super chat shortly. Hey, I'm on a live stream. Is this a conversation we can have on a live stream? Uh, I mean, that's up to you. Oh, I don't care. I don't, My chasers I mean, know who I am. I mean, he said that if you can change, you can either order it the way it is. I mean, take it the way it is, or you can change the color of it, or you know, like all the configurations of it. It's up to you. What is it? Up, uh, the nine eleven. And when will it when will it be delivered? He said probably in June. So it's not even built yet, but I can get it in June. Yes. All right. Hold on. Let me look. So I can get it in any configuration in any color I want. Yes. Ooh. I've always wanted a nine eleven. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll call him shortly. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. 
All right, let me read some of these super chats and I'm going to get y'all up out of here for the day. Uh, I'm technically Tim, says uh, that house with the floorboard that swallowed up your leg. Look, no, it wasn't a house, that was a church. That wasn't a house, that was a church. Uh, that swallowed up your leg looks straight out of the Thriller music video, OG, but glad you made it out unscathed. So now you can host the greatest morning show on earth. I should let I should let y'all design my uh design a 9-11. I should let y'all design it. What color? All of that. Um sister says, Mr. A D, I love your profiling skills. Yeah, we, we gonna identify him. We gonna identify him. You know who had the worst some of the worst strip clubs that I done been through? I'm gonna talk to that in a minute. Don't worry about it. We, we, we'll talk about it. Uh, I usually always get white. I usually always get white. Uh, J Ben says bones is trash, flat back nature gallery. I ain't never been there. Oh, yeah, you are in Arizona. I forgot about that. Um, Dream Palace Decent, Spirit Flight Model Body, Body Models. <laughs> Y'all don't like flatbacks? Y'all don't like flatbacks? Uh, Tawan AC50 says, AD, Kendrick bringing alpha male energy back. Man, all he do is throw shots. Men are too soft, and I think Kendrick is jealous. These days, and that's across the board on any. Nah, I'm not feeling it. I think that that Kendrick this was weak. Is weak. Chris Chapman says, "What I say to get timed out? I don't know, Chris. What did he say to get timed out, y'all? Oh, we gotta have red guts. Usually, all of my cars is white, but we definitely got got to get the red guts. Um, I'm starting to be obsessed with Porsche. I'm absolutely Porsche is is my favorite brand right now." Um, well, Bill and Journey says it's scopolamine, scopolamine dust. They use that in Colombia. Oh, so how come the people that's guiding you through it don't get affected, but you're the only person that get affected? That's what I'm trying to understand. Scopolamine, scopolamine dust. Eric Harris, I had to use my, uh, sound it out, sound it out. I had to use my skills. The way I use my credit card, Capital One notice, notice, notifies me of anything over $100, especially unfamiliar stores. J. Ben says, I got to look at my spending summary right now, too. I ain't do none of that um, in my day. VIP cash, man. VIP cash, man. Oh, I can't be out here throwing away nothing. Um, scopolamine. Scopolamine. Okay, I got you. Uh, those are sister clubs, and there's a quick trip in between all three. I used to leave to re-up on cash at quick trip and come back, skip the ATM, skip their ATM too. I don't trust nothing inside of those places. Regime says 9-11 time, my turn coming soon. <laughs> Jay Ben says squallowed in church getting swallowed is crazy. <laughs> well, I'm starting to really become obsessed with, with Porsche. I really am. I think that it's a great brand. They've treated me really well. Um, this will be my third, third Porsche. Cause I got a take hand and then I got the, the cayenne. I just got Rita a cayenne. Um, I need to look at my credit card spending. What'd I say? My credit card spending. And if that's what I was going to look at, uh, let's see. It'd be crazy. Credit card spending is out of control. Um, oh, I got a balance. Statements, spending summary. Guess I can go to spending summary. <laughs> what day is it this month? <laughs> This month ain't over yet? Jesus Christ. I did really well in um in January though. Yo, my spending summary is out of control, bro. This is crazy. If y'all seen this, y'all be like, dog, this is crazy, bro. I don't mind showing it. I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't mind showing it.
This is my spending summary. So March, I'm at 87,000. So March 2024. February, I was light. I had 54,000 in my spending summary. Uh, this is my credit card. Uh, January, I did 116,000 on my credit card. Um, 84,000 in December, 99,000 in November, October, 2023, I did $123,000 in spending. <sighs> Not cool. Average spending $95,000 a month on that particular card. So. Hmm. Well, looks like we're going to have to make some adjustments. Need to get our spending in order. Rita, Leslie, need to get our spending in order. Oh, my gosh. I need to change some things. I don't like this. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyway, so uh, I love y'all. I ain't show no account numbers. Don't worry about it. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for continuing to rock out. Y'all need to start requiring these people that tell y'all that they got all of this money um, to show y'all the receipts. Tell these people that keep telling y'all that they getting all of this money and they spending all of this money and they running it up. Tell them to show y'all the receipts. I don't want to hear none of that. All of these people that's running it up, they keep saying, I'm him. They getting it. We running it up. Okay, well, show it to me. Where, where the money at? Where's the receipts at? <laughs> Messi said, I ain't spending how much? I ain't spending what? I ain't spending what? Don't get me this. Don't get me. Don't get me started. You know, I will pull out all the receipts. I have no problem pulling up my receipts. Yes. What? I just signed into my Chase account, and they telling me what I ain't spending. Listen, I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for continuing to rock out with me. Uh, you guys, you guys are the greatest audience on the face of this earth. What ain't no proof? All right. I can sign back in. I have no problem with that. I just want to make sure I don't show no account number. So let me be let me be very, very clear. Let me just make sure I ain't showing no account numbers. Don't worry, I'll go into it. I have no problems whatsoever. You said they just being nosy? I don't have no problem showing my stuff. We can go to the PDF, we can go to the credit cards, we can do all of that. Spending report year to date. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Damn, I need to get something where it won't show my account number though. Cause I got about a quarter. I can I can filter it by the year too. All right, we can do that. We can we can filter it by the month. We can filter it by the year. And then I'm gonna read the super chats, and I'm gonna get y'all up out of here. So this is my spending summary. All right, and what they allow for you to do is you can go through and you can filter it. 
So I can go about a year, and I can go through 2023, for example. I don't know. 2023, save. And 2023, <clears throat> uh, for these particular accounts, I spent $1.2 million. That's in 2023 alone. So, you know. <clears throat> but that's just for these particular accounts. This ain't got nothing to do with fidelity and all of that other type of stuff. So it is what it is. I don't I don't mind showing my receipts. So anyways, I'm not about to show my account numbers. I'm not about to show all of that. It is what it is. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for continuing to rock with me. Uh, Ivory Hayes says, still haven't forgave Kendrick for the control verse. Y'all can't even quote the control verse. He just named a bunch of names, and y'all were surprised by it. Uh, Clay says, AD, my boy Coney was banned from sending Super Chats for over three months now. Can you check it out? All right, I'll look into it. I'll see I'll see what that is. Um, Jay Ben says, sliced bread is cool, but buns hit different. I like sliced bread. Sliced bread needs a place inside of our lives, too. Eric Harris says, how y'all going to make AD uh, put on all of his watches? I don't even have – I got on an Omega today. I got on an Omega today, so – I'm chilling, man. I, I, people know. I'll pull up the receipts without even thinking about it. So, anyways, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm not about to show my account numbers. So, Patreon members, y'all know what it is. Y'all seen all of my accounts and my account numbers and all of that. If y'all want to know, make sure y'all tap into the bag. Chaser's link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace.